This video is recorded in HD, so you'll want to view it in full screen mode. I'm going to demonstrate what the benefits and the differences are between using POP3 and IMAP to access a mail account. Since most mail accounts are personal mail accounts, they're not shared, then uh, most people are using POP3. That's what most people are familiar with. In a corporate environment or a teamwork environment where more than one people need to use the same email account, that is not a practical or even an acceptable solution. So in the business world, people tend to use IMAP instead. To demonstrate what some of the differences are, we will begin by setting up a POP3 account or we'll set up our client to access a mail account in POP3 mode. And since most people use Outlook Express, that's what I will use for my demonstration here. I'll start by just going through the process of setting it up. And during the setup process, I'm asked uh, how I would prefer to access my account, what mode to use. So I'm going to select POP3 here and then put in the uh, details for accessing the mail server. And the details for most mail servers are actually going to be exactly the same. The only difference is whether you selected POP3 or IMAP during the setup process. But of course, uh, the options that are available to you after you've set up your mail client is where you will see the difference. That completes the process. And now I'll click on send and receive. And since I was able to do that without getting an error message, that tells me that my uh, mail account is working as expected. No problem with it. Now I'm going to send a few emails to myself to populate my inbox. And now at this time I have my mail account client uh, set up with a few emails in it and this is the uh, default way that most people have their mail set up. Most people don't go any farther than this. Uh, some people will create folders for organization and so you can go new folder, set up a name for it, maybe that's for important mail and now I can drag and drop between my folders. However, everything that's happening here is only on my mail client. This folder does not exist online. Nobody else can access it. Nobody else can access my inbox. And my mail client, as soon as it grabs mail, um, it, uh, it'll download it and then it's gone forever. Now it's stuck on my computer. If I have a computer at home and one at work and I want to access the same email account, then I may find that I download email at work and then I go home and I don't have access to the same email. I don't have access to the same folders and uh, that can affect my work productivity. It is possible to adjust settings for your mail client so that it will not download or it won't delete uh, mail off of your server unless you first delete it. Uh, 
at your local client. A lot of people set up their mail like that so that uh, it's a little bit easier for them to work from different locations with the same email account. Let's go into properties and take a quick look at that. Here we go. Uh, under the advanced tab you can choose to leave a copy of messages on the server for a given number of days. Or until you delete a message that is in your trash folder. And uh, to demonstrate that, what, what I mean by that. I'll just place a check mark here. Click OK. Close. So here I have uh, two emails uh, in my inbox. One is over here in my important folder. Let's say I delete this. You'll notice that uh, my trash bin or my trash folder is called deleted items. And uh, this email wasn't actually deleted. It was only moved to this other folder. And it will remain on my server until I delete it from this particular folder. And of course, this time when I click delete, I get a prompt and Outlook says, are you really sure you want to delete this? And they drop the keyword permanent. So yeah, this is off the server now. Done. So uh, now I've demonstrated how to use folders and also how to configure your POP3 email in the event that you do need to use more than one computer to access the same email account. Now, uh, previously in this tutorial, I talked about email accounts uh, that are shared with other people. And uh, at this point, you can uh, have a little bit of an idea about uh, some of the weak points of POP3 when you're accessing from different computers. And the same thing is going to, of course, happen if different people are accessing your mail account. Uh, for example, they're not going to be able to use folders because all of, uh, all of the folders exist client-side. They're not server-side. But if you're using IMAP email, then any folders are actually server-side. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you now. So uh, I'll just go into accounts and delete the account that I created previously. And then we're going to add it back. And the process is exactly the same. Except on the drop-down, we're going to select IMAP as the uh, way that we want to connect and use email. And over here, uh, it can be a little bit misleading uh, because email clients will ask you if your server is POP3 or IMAP. These days, pretty much all servers can support IMAP. And because of that reason, uh, I suggest selecting IMAP just by default because it gives you more features, which we'll see soon as the video progresses. As soon as I'm done setting up the IMAP account, uh, I'm asked if I would like to download folders from the mail server that I just added. So uh, if I'm connecting for the first time um, to an IMAP account and somebody else created some folders, then I'll get to see those. And uh, right now, uh, I still see the important folder, although that's an artifact from my previous account. Uh, so actually, that was, uh, that's what's called a local folder. You can see that um, as soon as I added the IMAP account, 
it displays differently, uh, separate from my local folders. And uh, right now there's only an inbox. Uh, and if I click on send and receive, I think we'll see that it's actually empty because everything that uh, those, those three test emails were automatically deleted the moment that they were downloaded when I was in POP3 mode. So I'm going to send a few more test emails to myself. I've sent a few emails to myself so that my uh, inbox is now populated. And if I were to delete this account and then recreate it, we would see that the inbox remains populated because IMAP is specifically designed for a group environment. And uh, now if uh, since this is all online, if I create a new folder, that will also be online. And so that allows me to set up a organizational structure for an inbox. And then anybody else that uses that same mail account is going to be on the same structure as myself. And so that then gets the team organized. IMAP uh, mail functions a little bit differently than POP uh, in another way as well, which is that uh, anything that is deleted uh, stays on the server until it gets purged. And so to do that, I just click on this purge button, which has appeared. That's a new button on my uh, dialog box. It's only for IMAP accounts. And that purge button is essentially, um, it's, it's mimicking the behavior of my deleted items box where I can delete something from my inbox if I want, but I, c I retain a local copy until I delete it one more time from my trash box, which is called deleted items in Outlook Express. Over here, instead of having a deleted uh, items box, the view changes as soon as something is deleted. And you'll notice I can still read that email if I click on it. Purge, and then it's gone from both the uh, system online, from the online inbox, and from my local inbox at the same time. Depending on what mail client you are using, you might see differing levels of information and uh, some different behavior as well. I like to use Thunderbird. And in Thunderbird, um, if you delete something on uh, an IMAP account, the behavior is just a little bit different. And I'll demonstrate that real quick. Now I'm on my Firefox account, and this will demonstrate uh, the interface that you see with Firefox. I have the uh, new email account selected. I'm on the inbox. Uh, there's actually two ways, two locations where you can uh, locate that. Uh, they have a uh, collapsible view for different inboxes, and they're listed again down here. Uh, so things are nested a little bit differently. and It might take a little while to get used to that. Inboxes up here, if you want to access your folders, they're down a little bit.
And then if you delete something, it goes over here under trash. There'll be one trash bin per mail account. In a collaborative environment, it's useful at times to make sure that each team member has one mail uh, has one folder that is named after them. So you got a, a five member team working on a mail account, then you have five folders named after them and their workflow should consist of taking an item from the inbox, dragging it into their personal folder, and then responding to that email. And uh, by doing so, the inbox never has um, items that get responded to by more than one person at the same time. Everything stays orderly, and uh, that avoids redundant work. So everybody has a work folder and then in addition to that uh, as soon as something has been responded to uh, the item should be then moved to a complete folder or to a trash folder, archive folder, whatever you want. If you're working with uh, some kind of tasks or projects that have different stages, then have different folders which represent those different stages. For example, uh, perhaps uh, tasks are being uh, handled by email uh, and different teams have folders and then of course each team member in your organization has a private subfolder under the team folder. Uh, the team folder could then also have stages. As you can see, you can get uh, as complex as you want with your system. But the, the big benefit of IMAP email is that everybody sees the same thing. Everybody can work together.